This is Will with KL Aviation, and in this lesson we're going to look at airport symbols on a VFR sectional chart for non-towered airports. All right, here we have three non-towered airports. We have Talladega in the middle, Anniston Regional off to the east, and St. Clair County off to the west. Now the first thing we can see is that all of these are magenta symbols. Now the magenta is going to indicate to us that there is no control tower at the field. If there is a control tower, it's going to be blue. We'll go over towered airports in a separate lesson. The next thing to notice is that there looks like a little bit of a runway diagram in each circle. This actually is a diagram of what the runways look like at the airport. In all of these cases, there's only one runway, but if there were two runways, or three, or as many as there are, they will all be depicted. Now because these are solid magenta circles with the runways depicted, we can tell that the runways are between 1,500 feet long and 8,069 feet long. If the symbols actually looked like a runway, which we'll cover it in tower airports, with no circle around them, that would indicate that the runway, or the longest runway, was longer than 8,069 feet. Most smaller general aviation airports, though, don't have runways that long, and they're going to look just like these three airports right here. Okay, so the next thing that we can see about these circles is that we have these little tick marks around the outside. What these tick marks indicate is that the airport has fuel services available, and it also will have somebody there during normal business hours, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. local time, Monday through Friday, attending the airport, providing some services available to you, such as fuel, maintenance, or uh, any sort of other services that you might need. Next, all of these airports have this little star on top replacing the top tick mark. That star indicates the airport has a rotating beacon. Most airports in the country have a rotating beacon, so most airport diagrams are going to have this star on them. Finally, just by looking at the symbol itself, if we look at Talladega, there's this little dot right here. Now, if we come down and look, we can see that there's a Talladega VOR. And the circle is generally around the Talladega airport. So what this little dot is, is the actual location on the field of where the VOR is located. So you know if you're tracking to the Talladega VOR, you're basically tracking to the end of runway 3 or the beginning of runway 21. Okay, now that we know the basics about what we can get from just the airport symbol itself, let's take a look at all of this text underneath each diagram. Okay, first we have the airport name, St. Clair County, Talladega, and Anniston Regional. These are all the official names for the airport and the name that you should use if you're using the CTAF or Common Traffic Advisory Frequency so that everybody in the area knows exactly what airport you're talking about. In certain cases there might be two airports in a city and if you just use the city name who knows which one you're talking about. After the airport name we have the identifier for the airport. On the sectional chart the identifier is just going to be the three letters for the airport. It's not going to include the K for a United States airport. Okay, underneath the airport name and identifier we're going to have the weather frequency. So whether it's an AWOS or ASOS and the frequency that you can pick up the minute weather. So if you're going into Talladega you have an AWOS 3 system and you can get it on 118.425. Most of these AWOS and ASOS frequencies are shared amongst many airports, so you're going to have to listen up closely and make sure that you have the right airport when you're listening. There might be an airport 50, 60, 70 miles away with the same frequency, 
And if you're up just a little bit higher, maybe seven to 10,000 feet, you might be able to pick up both of them. So it's very important to listen to make sure that you have the right AWOS or ASOS frequency. All right, we're gonna drop down one line and we have the airport elevation. So here at Anniston, 612 feet, Talladega, 529 feet, St. Clair, 485 feet. All of these are in MSL. Next, most uh, non-towered airports are gonna have this little L with a asterisk. That technically indicates that uh, it's non-continuous lighting. You have to look at the airport facility directory, but for practical purposes, it means that there is pilot controlled lighting at the field. Okay, next we have this two digit number. So 60 at Talladega, 50 at St. Clair, and 70 at Anniston. It may be a three digit number as well. This is the runway length of the longest runway in thousands of feet. So in this case, St. Clair, it's a 5,000 foot long runway. Talladega has a 6,000 foot long runway, and Anniston has a 7,000 foot long runway. If the runway were to be 11,000 feet long, you would see a 110. So it could be a three digit number in that case. It becomes a little bit confusing sometimes if you're looking at a three digit number for elevation and a three digit number for runway length especially in cases where the airport may be located at, let's say, 100 feet. We'll cover those a little bit more in depth also with towered airports, since you'll run into that just a little bit more with the uh, longer runways at most towered airports. Okay, next we have the CTAF, or Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. And note one thing real quick here, you notice how the uh, CTAF frequency here at St. Clair is on a new line. That is just because there's this obstruction of a tower at 742 feet that doesn't allow that CTAF frequency to be placed on the same line as the others. So there's not really a convention as to how many lines there are for an airport diagram or the uh, airport information. So just keep reading down, they may be several lines long. Okay, this is a common tra traffic advisory frequency, so it's what you'll use to uh, call traffic when you are in the vicinity of the airport. Again, a lot of these frequencies, 122.8 is a very common one, 123.6, not so common, but uh, they'll be shared amongst many airports in the area. So it's very important to use this official full airport name so that whoever you're talking to on the traffic advisory frequency knows where you are. Okay, now there's something special here at uh, Talladega and at Anniston. You'll see this RP3 and RP5. Okay, looking at this uh, diagram, we can generally tell that this runway is probably runway 3 and runway 2-1. And at Anniston, we can tell that this is probably runway 5 and runway 23. I'll swap those around. I wrote those on the wrong ends. So what this is telling us with the RP is that it's a right-hand traffic pattern. So instead of flying left traffic to runway 3, you're actually going to fly right traffic to runway 3. This is usually because of some sort of uh, either restricted area, city, limitation, something like that that's blocking the uh, traffic pattern from being a normal left-hand traffic pattern. It's specific to each airport, so it's something that you really have to look out for. Here in Talladega, we can see that uh, it looks like you have the Talladega Raceway right here, so they probably don't want everyone overflying the raceway when they're doing traffic patterns. So on runway three, you'll do a right traffic pattern to avoid overflying the raceway. Up here at Anniston, there's a big chemical depot right here for the military. And so if you're doing left traffic on runway five, 
uh, there's a possibility that you're going to overfly that. There's also a few other little uh, military facilities and a big plant right here. So they want you to fly right traffic to avoid overflying any of those obstacles or any of those uh, sensitive areas. If you're unsure about the direction of traffic, consult the airport facility directory and it will specifically tell you uh, if there is right traffic for a runway, which runway, specific altitudes if necessary, and all of that other data that you need to know. These airport diagrams on the sectional chart are simply a quick reference for all the information you need while you're flying. But they certainly don't uh, replace looking at the airport facility directory, which will tell you much more information about the airport, what facilities are, are available with these tick marks, what time they are operating, and exactly what procedures you need to follow when you're at an airport. Okay, now before we're done with the complete explanation of non-towered airports, we have to look at just a few more symbols. Okay, we're going to start off with uh, this airport right here, St. Elmo. And we can see that it looks like all of the other airports, except there are no tick marks around the edge. So we can tell that this St. Elmo airport, although it's a public airport with a hard surface runway longer than 1,500 feet, does not offer any services. So if you land there, you're certainly not guaranteed to get any fuel or any other services that you might need. Okay, the next symbol that we're going to look at is this R in just a blank circle. And that's going to be generally a private airfield or restricted airfield where you have to obtain some owner's special use, uh, somebody's you know, farm airstrip that they have or uh, a private lodge, those kinds of things are going to have private restricted airfields. Just underneath that you have just this blank circle. What that is, is that's a non-towered airport with a non-hard surface runway. So that's going to be something like uh, turf or dirt or gravel or something like that. But there's no hard surface runway at that airport. However, it's not restricted and it is a public use airport. We can see here that the name of it is Ray and uh, the runway, whatever it is, is 2,000 feet long. Okay, moving up here to this Silver Hill. It's actually a uh, naval operations field, it looks like, but it's unverified. So there is an airport there, according to the last information the FAA has, but they're not able to verify the exact location or what exactly is available there. So if you see a U, uh, that just means that, that something's there, but uh, they're not sure, and that should just be used strictly for emergency purposes unless you happen to specifically know uh, the owner or what's going on with that airport. Now let's move our way over to uh, this little symbol right here. And that actually is an airport symbol. It looks a little bit funny because it's showing you the runway configuration, which looks like a triangle. There's no services, so there's no tick marks. There's no rotating beacon, so there's no star. And the only real indication you have is that there's actually just the uh, airport information here off to the right. But beware for these uh, sitting around, especially uh, military installations where they have satellite airfields. That's actually a satellite airfield for Pensacola for their training. And uh, make sure you, you keep an eye out for those since they are actually uh, airports out there and not some random symbol that's been placed on the sectional. Uh, while we're talking about airports with multiple runways, down here we have another one. Uh, you can see how the runways are depicted within the diagram there. Uh, looking at a towered airport, but just for reference, here is Mobile downtown. And since the longest runway is longer than uh, 8,069 feet, we can see it's 9,600 feet, uh, the runways are depicted as actual runways and not inside a circle. Finally, uh, while not technically an airport, we do have seaports that are depicted on the sectional for uh, purposes of being non-towered airports again and they're just magenta anchors with the same information as a non-towered airport. Now there's certainly some more in-depth information about uh, exactly what a symbol might look like for certain special cases, uh, but we're not going to get 
that deep into it, the basics that you need to know right now are just a non-towered airport is generally a magenta circle. It may look something like this, uh, only in magenta as well. The color magenta is the indicator for a non-towered airport. Also, just keep an eye out for the different services offered and for the runway configuration. I hope you learned something in this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you again in another KL Aviation lesson. Don't forget there's more great content at klaviation.com.